Madhavan Nair had taken over. Mr. Nair, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, special broadcast. I want to take uh, our viewers back to 2003 when you took over as the chairman of uh, ISRO. That's when the Lunar Mission Study Task Force actually began and finally that meeting that you had uh, with the former Prime Minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee and Chandrayaan 1 was envisaged. I want you to tell our viewers the journey and why exactly was the lunar mission of India so very important? Why did you, when you met the Prime Minister, insist that perhaps India should invest not only time and resources, but also plan ahead and even perhaps think of being ahead of NASA and the, the European Space Agency? Uh, well, uh, you have given partly the answers to the question itself. Uh, as you are aware, uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the vision. And in mastering this technology of space and then applying it for the benefit of the common man. Uh, in 2000, uh, when we took a review, uh, already most of such goals have been achieved. And what next has been the question before us? Uh, certainly, even early days, we were doing a little bit of uh, uh, resources were spent on <clears throat> uh, uh, ionospheric studies and uh, studying the stars and galaxies and so on using the spacecrafts. Uh, but uh, the question came, why not we go much deeper into the fundamental understanding of the universe? And that's how a study team was constituted with uh, Dr. Dr. Joseph as chairman. Dr. Kasturangan was the chairman at the time. And uh, this report was available to me when I took over. Uh, of course, uh, then uh, uh, I, uh, after my uh, briefing to the prime minister, uh, he was uh, really enthused. He said that, uh, yes, we should have a closer understanding of the moon. Of course, he was uh, really uh, citing uh, how our ancient uh, Vedic uh, texts, etc., has described about the moon and uh, the possibilities and so on. And uh, uh, then, of course, uh, uh, on the lighter side, he said the moon looks so beautiful uh, from the ground. And as you go closer and uh, have a close pictures, I don't know what uh, images you will get. Uh, certainly, it turned out to be so. We had the the. Of course, uh, we went through the. Uh, design of a uh, trajectory for uh, the traveling beyond the Earth's uh, gravitational field and then how to reach the moon. I also have a deep space tracking network which can keep in contact with the spacecraft and so on. So all those developments took place uh, in the 2005 to 2008 time frame. And 2008, in the first attempt itself, uh, we are uh, fortunate to have uh, arrived at the moon very precisely and placed our Chandrayaan-1 uh, in a lunar orbit. And there, of course, uh, it was a circular orbit going around. And we had a host of instruments from Indian scientists as well as from the international community, which has uh, really mapped the almost entire surface of the moon and uh, have a lot of information about the surface features, mineralogical content. and. Uh, Ultimately, the, we have were able to confer the presence of water on the moon and so on. So this was a starting point. Of course, later then uh, we wanted to have a confirmation about the remote sensing data. In situ measurement is important. That is how the Chandrayaan-2 was conceived, where uh, there will be a set of instruments landing on the surface of the moon, picking up samples, right. analyzing, sending it back. And uh, of course, as you know, Chandrayaan 2 did not succeed fully. Now the Chandrayaan 3 is an opportunity to prove that we can safely land on another planet. Before I come to Chandrayaan 3, uh, Dr. Nair, let me also take up our viewers through one very interesting fact with regards to Chandrayaan 1, when you were the chairman of ISRO. At that point in time, when Chandrayaan 1 was launched, 60% of the lunar missions by that time used to end in failure. But despite that, you and your team decided to go ahead with Chandrayaan 1. And of course, that uh, 
perhaps the intervention that was made by former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, where he said that how do you really prove that we were, uh, we had gone to the moon? And that's when a different object was altogether added to this Chandrayaan 1. I want to understand this, despite the failure rate being so very high at that point in time, how did you all actually overcome that? And Chandrayaan 1 became not only uh, a successful mission, but lauded by across the globe and of course led to the discovery of ice molecules too. Um, but certainly, ISRO always looks for challenges. And uh, as you rightly pointed out, the lunar missions were not that successful in the past. Several advanced countries have uh, failures uh, in their history. Uh, so we really took it very seriously. Uh, our mission team at Vikram Sarabhai Space Center did elaborate the computation as to the trajectory between Earth and the Moon, and also what is the optimum time for such an event, <coughs> and what type of launch vehicle has to be used, and so on. <coughs> More than that, uh, uh, I think, uh, as you rightly pointed out, after going there, we wanted to uh, the, see that our flag is uh, deposited on the surface of the moon. So that is the uh, suggestion from Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, then president, to have the uh, moon impact prop. So that also was realized. Now, how we achieved this was uh, here um, uh, concentrated efforts and uh, cautious approach. We have uh, normally uh, the people go from uh, Earth to moon in a single shot. Russians, they do that quite often. And uh, Americans, of course, uh, go around the Earth and then uh, from there they take off. Uh, so we thought that it is better to first understand what happens when we go to higher altitudes uh, from the Earth's surface. So we have uh, uh, gone to elliptical orbits, reaching up to something like 1.7 lakhs kilometers. Uh, and uh, from there, we try to calibrate the And the differences which may cross uh, the trajectory. So this cautious approach has resulted in a precise targeting and also the instrumentation on board the Chandrayaan spacecraft as well as the deep space tracking network. What we have established at Bangalore has helped in uh, steering it accurately. And finally, we were happy that uh, we arrived at the moon within a pillbox of 10 kilometers. So this was a great achievement for any country. Uh, it is the same simply because uh, we, we didn't know many things about it. So we took a cautious approach, went on calibrating at every moment, and then trying to see what uh, we done next, etc. The real-time corrections have helped us in achieving the lunar orbit uh, in the first attempt itself. Uh, then, of course, the, on the instruments, uh, Indian scientists have come forward with half a dozen instruments. But uh, then we could find a little bit of spare capacity, and I used that opportunity to rope in some international cooperation. Uh, some of the instruments from NASA and ESA were put on board. So it became a total complement of 12 instruments, which have uh, given a total mineralogical mapping, and above all, the presence of water molecules throughout the surface, and the presence of huge deposits of ice blocks in the South Polar region. So this, uh, again, uh, this shows that how ISRO goes about uh, very meticulous planning and implementation of their programs and uh, take up the uh, challenges in a sporting manner. Dr. Nair, can I also uh, perhaps tell our viewers what I found very interesting is uh, you had essentially told the government and you've also written this uh, in various articles that had we not started the lunar mission on time, not only would, he, would we have been left behind, but perhaps NASA and the ESA would not have ever shared their data, would not have collaborated with us. So somewhere down the line, you've, you actually foresaw what is going to happen. And not only that, perhaps put India on that very map that we could have actually missed uh, well, certainly uh, we were, uh, uh, the NASA and uh, 
the Russian Space Agency and the U.S. Space Agency, they had several missions to the moon in the 60s. And they had a lot of information about the lunar surface and uh, some of the minerals, etc., in the equatorial region. Uh, so, But unfortunately, these scientists' uh, scientific data is kept secret, and they will not share with other countries. So we took upon ourselves that uh, we should uh, break this barrier and also try to see that our own capability to go to moon or Mars at the earliest. So this opportunity was uh, converted to the Chandrayaan-1 mission uh, using our own rocket system and uh, totally indigenously designed uh, spacecraft and instruments. And uh, in fact, uh, the, the uh, non-cooperation or the uh, uh, non-sharing of the data by the advanced countries uh, was really been the trigger factor which has made us uh, go on our own and finally prove our capability in this uh, high-tech area. Mr. Nair, I, I want to now focus a little bit about uh, Chandrayaan-3 uh, and uh, perhaps you've made this uh, statement multiple times, but I just want to understand uh, where does it really come from? The very fact that you say that you're extremely confident that despite the kind of complex mission that Chandrayaan-3 is, it is going to be extremely successful. This is the backdrop of failure uh, as far as Roscosmos says, uh, Luna 25 is concerned, but despite that, you are saying that this is going to be extremely successful. What makes you so very confident? Uh, well, Chandrayaan 2, we learned uh, quite a bit of uh, lessons. In fact, uh, the orbiter was uh, absolutely perfect. It was a 100% success. Then the descending operation also was uh, perfect up to an altitude of nearly 2 kilometers. At that instant, something went wrong. Uh, of course, the data available was a uh, very limited period, but we know that uh, after the two kilometer, it uh, lost the uh, uh, control in velocity and attitude and finally crashed, landed on the surface of the moon. Uh, then ISRO team, I understand they have went into every possible reason which can lead to such a catastrophe, and uh, they have uh, made uh, design modifications and corrections in such a way that such events will not take place. Uh, they strengthen the, first of all, the landing uh, the pads, uh, the, the, the ports on which uh, the spacecraft will land on the surface of the moon. The thruster configuration has been modified. The thrusters have been redesigned and re qualified again uh, for a variable thrust and adjusting the level depending on the gravitational field of the moon and so on. And again, uh, the host of sensors have been introduced on board uh, to detect and provide a redundant uh, mechanism for finding the status of the spacecraft. Or, or then again, the, the, the total control and guidance algorithm also has been revisited and the entire autonomous functions have been simulated a large number of uh, times on the ground with possible scenarios of deviation and possible scenarios of failures of actuators or sensors and so on. And uh, with that confidence only, the Chandrayaan-3 is cleared. So with that type of effort which has gone behind in understanding the landing phenomena, uh, certainly uh, I hope ISRO will be able to have a 100% success in the coming mission. Dr. Nair, with regards to one wish that you and your team always had that we should have a permanent facility on the moon. You've spoken about this in the past. With Chandrayaan-3, and if it goes exactly how it is planned, do you think perhaps it is time for a permanent facility on the moon in the coming few years? Perhaps that is going to be the what next moment for ISRO? Uh, certainly, I think uh, when US is planning to have their astronautic missions, uh, the man going back to moon again, uh, we should not be lagging behind them very much. Uh, of course, we do not have the luxury of carrying the man capsule to the moon at the moment. So the best option is to go for a robotic exploration of the moon, especially the unexplored regions, and uh, establish some sort of a permanent observatory uh, that can be a substitute for the space station, uh, which is very prohibitively expensive to maintain. 
So this uh, station out there on the moon can be looking at the stars, galaxies, and uh, beyond, and uh, give a lot of scientific data about the origin of the universe and how it is progressing and so on. And again, uh, observing the moon, and the, the sun and the Earth uh, simultaneously one moon uh, will give us a lot of information about the climate change and related parameters as well. So that way, I think India should be targeting to have a robotic exploration uh, station there. In addition, of course, the possibility of uh, uh, collecting helium-3 from the surface of the moon or uh, taking some exotic minerals from there uh, back to Earth also should be in the agenda uh, in the future days. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nair, for putting this into perspective and also taking us through this uh, journey. Not very often do we get an opportunity to hear those uh, valent stories the sacrifices that have also been made by our scientists. Now, perhaps we are moving towards the third successful lunar mission. Once again, thank you very much, uh, G. Madhavan Nair, former ISRO chairman, for joining us on Republic TV. I wish the entire ISRO team and the country good luck in the coming operation of the lunar, the Chandrayaan 3. Well, in fact, our rolling coverage uh, continues as we inch closer to that very moment, the big moment as uh, Chandra and 3 attempts for a soft landing on the lunar south pole. Stepping on a short break, on the other side, news and updates continue. Shifting focus uh, to the latest in the Kaveri water issue between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka as uh, the states are on the verge of fighting yet another legal battle over the sharing of the waters of the river Kaveri. The Congress government has, uh, of Karnataka has convened an all-party meeting uh, to 